All right, we are here. We have made it in Michigan to the River Raisin Historic Battlefield Park, run by the National Park Services. This is an 1812 war site. So let's go on the inside and see what they got here. So we can see here we have American and British flags flying because in the war 1812, the British tried to recapture the United States after the Revolutionary War, but guys here in Michigan stopped that from happening. Walking in here, hopefully, don't get it. But we got people here showing the area of the battlefield. This was more or less actually as like a buffer between the Got a uh, replica of so the three of these that span the loss of the river. This was the focus on the Yeah. Got some uniforms here. And the cannon. The King Howitzer. This is a free museum, so be sure you come check it out. The USS Constitution. This is a replica of the ship. Beautiful painting here of a lake. Some ships on the off the coast. Hello, yeah, sir. Here to start a war? Probably. United <laughs> we stand. I'm sure that this area has been inhabited for thousands of years. You pointed out during the war, is there a way there has been a village on the Right in the front, they have a big map of. Michigan, you can see on this side, Black Ash Swamp. That's where Toledo and um, Bowling Green is located. But you can see up here the dotted line is where 75 would be. You can see the river raisin right at the mouth of Lake Erie. You can see Canada here, Detroit up there. You can see that the Potawatomi Village is here where we are standing currently. But you can see here. We have Sandusky in the Sandusky Islands, Putin Bay, Kelly's Island here. And this battle took place right over in here. This, where the square is, is where Toledo would be. You can see lots of entryways to the to the lake. Lots of Native American settlements in the area leading up to Detroit. Right there. We also have like this gift shop here. Up in 10 to 5. We got National Park Service stuff, Michigan stuff, all about the war. If you want to learn more about it, the War of 1812, 
Okay, I have lots of books here. If you uh, follow, you know, collect pens and stuff, you get a bunch of pens here to commemorate your 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 visit here to the River Raisin National Battlefield. All right, so now that we visited the visitor center, picked up some maps and some information, let's go see the battlefield. And, uh, you know, let's learn a little bit more about how this impacted um, the fight in the World War of 1812. All right, we are here at the River Basin National Park, where the battlefield is. You can see the American flag and the Union Jack flying above. It's because the War of 1812 was between the British and the Americans post-Revolutionary War. So flags are flying to commemorate that. So we are now across the street. We are going to view some of these plaques regarding the battlefield here, right on the on the river here across the street. Um, this is a, a, a main battle in the War of 1812. You know, there's a lot. Doesn't seem like there's a lot to see, but it's a lot to learn and to understand how we became as a country. Here's the first plaque titled Private Claim 236, a lot of George McDougall. George McDougall was a wealthy prominent cousin of Colonel Francois Navarre, who owned this property for 20, by, owned the property occupied by 25 year old Pierre Jacob and his mother, Magdalene Godet Jacob LeBlanc. Unaware of the imminent declaration of war, Magdalene peacefully stood on their front porch feeding the chickens while her son, Pierre, chopped wood in preparation of the long, cold days of winter. LeBlanc's French pear trees grafted from famous Jesuit pear tree were in full bloom the trees represented the 12 disciples of Christ and 11 were planted together and won the Judas tree. What was here before the battle? Here's a quick map. But the peaceful homestead along the River Raisin became er eerily quiet as the neighboring Wyandotte warned the settlers of the growing tensions with the U.S. After the U.S. surrendered the Michigan Territory in August of 1812, the LeBlancs found themselves at the mercy of the native warriors and the British soldiers who soon occupied the French settlement. On January 18th of 1813, the LeBlancs found themselves in the middle of the Battle of the River Raisin. Upon liberati liberating Frenchtown in the long-running Battle of the North of Mason Run, U.S. returned to Frenchtown settlement. U.S. commanders demanded use of the LeBlanc homes as barracks. They're stable to board military horses and their big houses serve as an armory. Magdalene insisted on charging the U.S. room and board, but never was paid. Big surprise there. On the 23rd of January, the morning after the Second Battle of the River Raisin, the La Blanc house was burnt to the ground and all of its contents were lost. The property owner, George McDougall, claimed his prop destroyed property was worth two grand and he was awarded $800 for his loss. However, the LeBlancs who lived here were never paid for their losses. It's very, very quiet here as it, as it should be kept. Here there's uh, information about um, the River Raisin um, right here. So let's, let's read. River Raisin has had a long cultural history here. It was known as the 
Numaspe, the river of the surgeon by the Native Americans. Um, the French and Eng the French named it uh, La Riviere aux Raisons. The English and Americans were later angelize the French into the name we use today, and that's the River Raisin. So, in 1987, um, it was listed as a concern area from the United States and Canada under the Great Lakes Water Quality Agreement. So, 10 years later, in 97, the first sediment cleanup was uh, took place, um, which was then continued in 2010, 2012, and 2016 to remove toxic material from the river. And the view of this river is absolutely gorgeous. See the bridge there that goes into Monroe? And it's natural beauty. So right here by the road, we have a Monroe County Historical Society marker. At the top, it, it lets you know was French Town in 1785 and then renamed in 1817 to Monroe. So this is the first district court here in the log house of Jean Vastip Jérôme, the federal court of the Erie District Territory, Michigan held its first session in 1805 on July 3rd. President Thomas Jefferson named Judge Augustus B. Woodward to preside. Beginning in 1807, the Hess District Court of Common Pleas also met here or across the river in Francois Navas' home. Jérôme's home held wounded American prisoners of war during the massacre at the River Raisin. And in the bitter cold dawn of January 23rd, 1813, Indian allies of the British scalped those who could not walk and burned the house down. So you can see these signs have a little bit of variance as to what happened to the people that were attacked by British and Native American forces uh, at, during the battle. So here we have another sign about private claim 96 of Jean-Baptiste Couture. Friends and family arrived at his farmstead uh, on the cold New Year's Eve of 1812. Guests brought baskets of food, jugs of spirits to celebrate La Saint Silvestia or Saint's Feast Day, ushering in the beginning of 1813 as the Couture's ten children, some of who still lived at the home innocently, played with other children outside. Fiddlers turned the focus away from the war to dancing and fellowship. Card players shared stories of the past year's adventures, but soon the conversation returned to the latest news regarding the Native and British occupation along the River Raisin. Hopes of of a peaceful new year were shattered on January 18th, 1813, when U.S. forces attacked the Native Confederation and the British along the River Raisin. After successfully liberating the French inhabitants, Kentucky regiment officers established their headquarters in the Couture home, and Mr. Couture resumed his responsibility as captain of the 2nd Michigan. On January 22nd, Captain Couture was killed during the Second Battle of the River Raisin while reinforcing the right wing of the U.S. Army. His son, Medard, hid his father's body near their home to prevent mutilation. Catherine Couture and their youngest children found refuge across the river at the home of Colonel Francis Navarre and were deeply shocked when a warrior entered the Navarre's home wearing the bloody coat of their beloved husband and father, confirming their worst fears. On the morning of the 23rd of January, a native warrior captured Nadard while he tended U.S. wounded in the nearby Jerome House. Ottawa Chief Wagon recognized Nadard threw a blanket over him and declared, His father lies dead in the yard. He is now my son. 
Chief Wagon saved Bernard's life, but the Couture family buildings were looted and burned. So with that, I think we're ending the the tour here. Um, but crazy stories, uh, you know, talking about the brutalness of, uh, you know, the Native American uh, warriors as well as the British Army who essentially, uh, you know, told these people to go and skin these guys alive. Um, they really wanted this area um, in order to have battleships, uh, you know, frigateers, privateers coming in uh, from Lake Erie, which is the connection uh, the Midwest to, you know, the Atlantic coast. Um, so very important battles here. You know, at, all the structures were burnt down during the War of 1812, over 200 years ago. Um, but the the barracks here, the wooden fence still remains. Um, and, you know, it's a national park. So if you are interested in the War of 1812 or discovering some Michigan, Ohio stuff, come visit um, the, the, the Battlefield Park here at uh, River Raisin. Um, and with that being said, thanks for coming with me on this road trip uh, from, you know, going all the way up to Monroe, Michigan from Ohio. So make sure to like and subscribe um, if you want more history content or if you're looking to support a local uh, small YouTube channel. Follow Alex Florin. We are out of here at the New Raisin Battlefield National Park. Uh, with that being said, have a good day, and it is never too late to learn about history.